Welcome to Season 2 of Busting Addiction and Its Myths, sponsored by Safe House Rehab Thailand, where we offer a modern approach to recovery, breaking with tradition by introducing new technologies that help disrupt the cycle of addiction. To learn more, visit us at safehouserehab.com and click on the video, or contact us at info at safehouserehab.com, and we'll tell you about our $1,000 airfare allowance and referral rewards program. My name is Bruno J. And here's why I created this podcast. Our research has shown that despite the opioid epidemic and the worldwide panic over the ravages of addiction, we didn't see that treatment centers were doing anything different to break the cycle more effectively and improve the odds of long-term success. So we have set out to do things differently and to let all those who love an addict or alcoholic know more about the advances in treatment that we represent. Here's what we're doing differently. We have designed our diagnostics and detox to isolate and treat opioid and multi-addiction, example, alcohol plus opioids plus speed, more effectively, given that these are the new challenges of addiction in the 21st century. We integrate leading-edge technology into the recovering process, thereby disrupting the disorder, speeding the recovery of brain health. Clients come to treatment with damaged brains. This is a given. We pay attention to the importance of dopamine and other ingredients vital to brain health recovery. Traditional rehabs don't provide anywhere near the tools and close guidance that clients truly need to help keep them clean and sober for life. We do it right. First, we advise our clients to go into our sober living facility to serve as a transition to normal life, and we absolutely outperform traditional rehabs when it comes to providing a structure for long-term recovery. So if you love an addict or alcoholic and you feel like your loved one is sucking the oxygen out of your life, is stealing your money, stealing your peace of mind and your sanity, this podcast is for you. If you're feeling rage and shame and, and he or she is living rent-free in your head 24-7, this podcast is for you. I hope to have you gain a better understanding of the nature of addictive disorder and the invisible effect it has on your psyche. It's my fervent hope you also gain a little more compassion for your loved one and for yourself in spite of this cunning, baffling, and powerful disease. To paraphrase an author in this space, we struggle because we love. This is part two of Q&A on AA with Tony. I believe that there are many perfectly normal, wonderful people who live their lives according to the principles of honesty, integrity, unselfishness, compassion, and accountability quite naturally and intuitively. Yes, but addicts and alcoholics have to be taught those principles because they've um, lost or violated them uh, during the using or drinking days. So, of course, one of our defining characteristics is besides our abuse of substances... Extreme self-centeredness, completely and utterly focusing on yourself without even knowing that you're completely... Right. Doing so. Okay. So you're heedless to the consequences of your selfishness yeah. to you and to others, yeah. right? Yeah. You're just oblivious yeah. to it. It's like a it's hur- amazing, yeah. isn't it? It's it's like a genuinely a hurricane. You can't say that yeah. a hurricane that is just a peaceful, happy. Right. It but if in. you're in the eye, it's peaceful yeah. for you yeah, at the yeah, time, course, and yeah. this shit's yeah. happening all the way around yeah. you, right? And it's exactly the same with the extreme self-centeredness. Yeah. There you go. In addiction. Okay. Everyone's affected. Anything you touch, everyone around you, in somewhat way, they get, a, they get it. You've heard the phrase, I don't have a drinking problem, I have a thinking problem, right? Which mm-hmm. means that um, drinking is a small part of a bigger problem. And the vast majority of our problem is how we think, right? Yeah. Okay. Well, um, I would have to say, perhaps, that Because I'm self-centered in the extreme and without help, I'm going to be thinking. You've heard of a dry drunk, right? Sure. Dry drunks are, the drunk isn't drinking, but he's thinking like a drunk. Mm -hmm. That's all I'm saying, Mm is we think like drunks. And and if we put booze or or drugs into our system, it's just amplified. The craziness Mm -hmm. is amplified. Mm -hmm. And then there's violent, perhaps violent behavior associated with it. Here's another thought. Drinking or abusing drugs explains much of our bad, selfish behavior. But wait, it doesn't excuse it either, right? 
uh, we still have to hold ourselves accountable like grown-ups and make direct, proper amends. So, and this is why I say to some of the guys I sponsor, let's like, look, you know, don't beat yourself up too much. You're in the grip of a powerful disease, but it's not an excuse either because AA is about a program of accountability, holding ourselves accountable without beating ourselves up. Does that, is that, um, do you want to talk about that? In a nutshell, I think the things we've done in the past, whether it be with or without um, substances, but in this case with the substances, we have to accept them for what they are, for what we've done. We have to take complete and utter responsibility because at the end of the day, we are the ones that behave this way. We're the ones that did that. There's no one to blame but us, right? Correct. Okay. And it's the sooner we come, come to terms with that, the better, but it's, it's be kind to yourself, be gentle with yourself, don't beat yourself up about it. Right. It's in the past, it's in the past. You can't right. Right. change the past, right. right? But you can you can well, you change the future, but you can you can better your future. You can, you can better work your it. prospects, certainly. Yeah, yeah. And everything you can um, yeah. you can work towards making amends for the the chaos and the damage that you've caused in the past. But don't beat yourself up to it right. too much. Acknowledge that's, that's it. That's unhealthy. Own it. That's unhealthy, right? So do you, did you do what I did, which was blame other people or circumstances for uh, my behavior or my, or my losses, if you will, you know, getting fired from a job, losing money, feeling like shit all the time? Did I blame others? It was never my fault. It was never my fault, was it? It was never my no, fault. It was nothing to do with me. It was always someone to right. Right. Blame. A girlfriend. Point the uh, fingers at. Right. Yeah. Uh, it's that bitch's fault. For, for a right. while, it was always my mother. Interesting. For a while, it right. was always my mother. She's an innocent human being, yep. and she's to blame for your troubles. <laughs> Let's say I have blamed my dad and my mom and my wife and my ex-wife and my girlfriend and my boss. <laughs> if she had behaved differently, I wouldn't have had a problem with my drinking. <laughs> wouldn't have drank so much if you if you if you were married to my bitch you'd be drinking too right that (laughs) kind of stuff um so i concluded a while ago as kind of a student of the process which you know helps me and helps me write and create uh some of these podcasts that you know here's here's an interesting thought i never thought you'd think this way that there's liberation and discipline and victory and surrender. No way would I have ever, ever thought those kinds of thoughts before I threw on the towel and accepted help. Tony, do you agree that there is pain and resistance, kind of a Buddhist thought, if you will, and that acceptance of reality as it is, as opposed to what you would like it to be, is absolutely critical to your peace of mind and serenity as you go about your business? So, so. Okay. Acceptance of things as they really are as opposed to the way you would like them to be. Again, it is just reinforcing that the sooner you accept it, you do get peace of mind. Because if you don't accept it, you're still fighting with it. Right. You're still struggling. Right. You're resisting. You're not, you're not, you're, they're you resisting the truth, as I call it. It's right? because you haven't surrendered. Yeah. Okay. So Good. Good. All right. You, why, why are you still fighting it? Right. Yeah. You haven't. No. Nah, you're not there. Okay. It's not peace of mind. Well, we we used to fight reality all the time because we didn't like it, right? Mm. So a big part of resistance I initially had was to the concept of a higher power. But then when I grasped the idea that it was any power outside of my limited personal resources, like using the group as my higher power or the principles of as outlined in AA, then I realized I could stop having to fight this thing on my own. So I think we talked about this a little bit. What What is your take on a higher power? In other words, a uh, power uh, outside of or greater than yourself. And while you consider the question, do you think that the concept is, quote, a reason, or the concept of a higher power is a reason or an excuse uh, for younger people today? Yes, absolutely. Seen it time and time and time and time and time over and over and over again. Just the word that higher power causes so much conflict in individuals' brains, in their head. 
you can see it kind of forming. It's just a wall just coming is up. Is that cultural conditioning? I don't what the know. hell is it? I don't know, but a wall just goes straight up. Is it the millennials? Is it the way that the, the modern society they kind of bring it up? It just seems to be far more apparent, the closed minded, high more, power. More so today than in the past. More right. so, I, I genuinely think that. Okay. Genuinely right. think that. And you, you can't control what they're thinking, but you can very. I, I, I'm more and more so seeing that people are just more fighting it, more resistant to it. As in, they won't even accept anything else that there is to talk about when there's so much more to talk about right. just because they've heard one word, as in yeah. higher power, yeah. association. Like, I don't know. Is, right. Are they thinking of the man right. on the cloud in the sky again? Right. Are they thinking of religion in particular? When I try to explain to people to get that wall down or just try and open their mind up a little bit, I try to say, higher power, right? All it has to be is... Not you on your own. You plus something else. You plus your higher power. Whether it's you and your mobile phone, whether it's you and that pencil, whether it's you and your family member, it doesn't matter as right. long as it's not you on your own. Right. You plus something else is stronger. Right. So uh, we, we used to call, in my marketing job, we used to call the generation, uh, the millennials and the younger generation behind them, the invincibles, right? And we were, we were trying to sell them health insurance. A lot of us said, screw it, I don't need no health insurance. It's the same sort of thing, isn't it? Yeah. It's like, who the hell needs this? Does it ever occur to them that their best thinking got them in to where they are right no. now? I mean, it's like, isn't that odd? It's like, uh, excuse me, but I'm able to leave now, and mm -hmm. you have to stay here. Mm. When I had this discussion with a friend I was sponsoring, and he was in jail. Mm. Right, and he was struggling with the concept of the mm. higher power and surrender and all this other stuff. I said, "Look, Billy, I'll tell you what." I said, "You know the best part of our conversations." And I'm on the phone on a video ch call mm. in the jail, so he's not even in front of me like you see mm. in the movies. He's somewhere else, but we have a video link, mm. so he's looking at me, and I'm looking at him on the you know on the on the screen. I'm going, "Here's the best part of my conversation, <laughs> Billy." He said, "I get to leave. All right, you keep thinking the way you're thinking." And you can stay there. Mm. It's like it never occurs to them, right? That mm. their their way of thinking got them to that place. And so when you ask them to change their thinking, it's like no. <laughs> and and I get that. I get that because I was there. Like, I was there in that the same hell? space. I was there at this at some point as well. It's just well, and they call it a uh, they call it a mental illness for a reason mm. because the thinking is really really mm. warped. The, the the obvious truth is not grasped, right? Just a couple more things here. What's your take when we start our uh, AA meetings with uh, the quote, rarely have we seen a person fail who has thoroughly followed our path. And I look at that as a really great promise. What does that mean to you? It really is taking and really taking on board everything that is suggested. Okay. Not, not part of what's suggested. Right. Not, not what you... What you what you think is yeah, enough, or, yeah, right. or, or, or what, what you, you like or don't like, yeah, what you like or what you don't like. Right, right. But taking everything that's suggested <clears throat> on board. So whether that is going to regular meetings, getting a sponsor, doing some service, working the steps, plus any other things. Right. Got um, it. But it's to do all of it. Everything right. that's suggested, do it and stick with it. Not just for a week. Not just for a month. Put your shoulder into it. Yeah. Just jump in. I call, I call it an all-or-nothing game, right? Yeah, yeah. Some of us try to hold on to our old ideas and the results were what? Mm. Nil until you let go, meaning let go of your old ideas and take on these new ideas. Perfect. How about the fact that you can come and go in AA meetings and even not even drop any money in the basket to cover the rent of a church basement or some other facility where meetings can be held? Is that, isn't that... <laughs> Isn't that an invitation to anarchy? But I mean, not, you can do what you can come and go. You don't have to pay. People don't believe it, do they? At first. Yeah, and I mean, the beauty of it is it. Uh, the beauty of it is that I mean, you you are your own person. If you want to contribute, you contribute. If you don't want to contribute, you don't have to contribute. But the help is there. The help is there for you to take really free, freely given. Free. So. Um, Anything else that you want to say about AA that busts a myth or sheds some light 
um, on this program, which is known as a true democracy without a leader. <laughs> Two million members worldwide. And our basic text is now published in at least 34 languages and more and more um, each year. So the big question to me is, would you have stayed sober and, and grown as a person without being part of AA? What's your opinion? Could, do you think that you could have stayed sober and also grown as a person, which is way beyond just not drinking, uh, without uh, being part of Alcoholics Anonymous? And I'm not selling AA now, I'm just asking you. Would there have been any substitute for AA that would have gotten you to where you are today? No. Okay. No. Nothing. Nothing available. I mean, we're all, we also talk about AA as not group therapy, because there's no leader, right, in the group. It's self, you know, self-directed, mm -hmm. and um, you 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 share without interruption. Mm. So there's no crosstalk. So it's not group therapy. But it has a powerful effect, though, does it not? So, in my humble opinion, it's about the love, right? It's about the love. To me, it's about God's love at work through other people. It is. And it's the people in there, they understand you. They understand. We understand each other. other. Yeah. We can help each other right. in the way that you you can't... You, it's just not elsewhere. Right. It's a... It's a great place where you, you, you get the help you need from the people who understand you. The main takeaway, what, what is the main thing that you would like um, people who are not acquainted with AA or even have uh, prejudice against it, particularly those people who have an addict or an alcoholic in their family, what is the one main idea that you want to leave with them today? Know that there is a place for people who have addiction, alcohol problems, who help each other in their journey of sobriety, not sobriety, um, with their, they, they share the journey with the same goal of what, having the same goal of living a life free of alcohol and drugs. There you go. Okay. But, but having that, just <clears throat> know that there is a network out there mm -hmm. that is free, that can help, right. and be open-minded to it. It's not just going to be one group in one place, in one location. Right. There is hundreds and thousands of them all over the place now. Right. And it is a proven method that works. And even if you don't like one, try another one. Try if you don't like the other one, yeah. try another okay. one. And it, cause it's not, the program's a program, but the people you'll find there, you'll find different people in different places. Right. Yeah, it's about finding the right people that you connect with who you can talk to, because uh, at the end of the day, they all did have the same problem before. They've dealt with it or are working on it, and they've all got the same goal in the future. And your conversation, um, according to our um, principles or traditions, uh, ever reminds us to place principles before personalities. That means that I have no right to disclose that I saw you at an AA or NA meeting, but I, uh, I can disclose that I'm a member of AA only for myself. Correct. So there is some protection, if you will, of my own participation or membership in this thing that helps shield me from any stigma, either by my family or my friends or my job or, or my community at large. All right, that was great. So tune in next week, dear listeners, for more insight coming from Love and Truth here at Busting Addiction and its Myths. So what have we learned today? First, overall, Alcoholics Anonymous, or AA, is a tried and true method of staying sober for millions of alcoholics around the world. Two, there's an irrational resistance to the concept of a higher power, simply because alcoholics want to do this on their own and in their own way. Three, Surrender has a lousy reputation, but it's critical to taking the first step on the road to recovery. Four, AA is not a secret society. If anything, it encourages recovering people to live open and productive lives, to go out there in society and be a good member of society. Five, as Tony has so eloquently described, 
AA is an all or nothing deal that really works to liberate you from the jaws of defeat and allows you to live an inspired and joyful life. Thank you for tuning in today. It's my fervent hope we've given you new insight and new hope that will lighten your burden. For our hearts go out to all who suffer the effects of addictive disorder. Please give us your feedback at info at safehouserehab.com. By all means, ask us any question you like, and we'll answer on air, if you will. And if you want to leave us your first name and city, we'll recognize you too, of course. This podcast is sponsored by safehouserehab.com where we take a modern approach to recovery, something all families of those who suffer deserve. Tune in next week for more.